Welcome back everyone, and in this lesson we're going to go ahead and kill off our player when he collides with one of the evil QBs. And when he does that, let's actually do something. Uh, I don't want to destroy him. Let's just go ahead and we'll learn how to switch scenes, and we'll go back to the main menu scene. Now scenes in Unity are, just think of them as levels in your game, right? You can have like your city level, your cave level, just levels. I'm sure everyone's pretty familiar with that concept, and they're really easy to make. For instance, we have this one scene here that we started with. I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that's saved. Then I use the keyboard shortcut command N to make a new one. But you can also come up to the file menu and take a look right there. So in this scene, I'm going to go ahead and this is the one we're going to be switching to. Uh, it's going to be our main menu, well, game menu. Now let's call it main menu because game menu to me makes me think of you know a menu that's actually in the game while we're playing. So I'm just going to call it main menu. I'm going to make sure it's saved inside of my scenes folder. There we go, we have it up top. Let's go ahead and put something in here just so we know that when we switch to it, that you know, this is the scene. I'm just gonna put a sphere into it. Uh, let's go ahead and reset that sphere so it's exactly in the center. Let's go ahead and look at the game view. There we go, so we know when we get here, this is going to be the main menu scene. And we'll go ahead and we'll fill that out in the next video. So let's go ahead and go into our other scene and the one we're working on, which is the demo one. I'm gonna save that off. Now to go ahead and switch between scenes, we gotta to go to the build settings. So I'm gonna come down here to build settings. So right up here is where we have our scenes. And we also have the open or add open scene, which is what we're currently in. So if we go ahead and click on it, it's gonna add the, the scene that we're in. And over here's the index. So as we get more scenes added, this will just keep going up and it goes up by ones. And over here we have the actual name. Now this is part of the scene slash, that's just the path, the actual name of the scene is just demo one. Then of course we have a little checkbox here to show whether or not a scene is going to be included or not. It is possible to have certain builds, especially when you start doing uh, different platforms. Maybe there's certain scenes you want included, maybe there's certain scenes you don't, but you still want to be able to keep them sorted. So let's go ahead and add our main menu scene to here. So now we have two. So you can just click and drag a scene into it. You don't have to go to every scene and use the add scene button. That would get very tired. But our main menu, we want it to be first. I mean, Unity, when, it, when you build your game and it first starts and you're playing it, it will always load scene zero by default. And we don't want our game to start by default. We want the actual main menu. And of course, later on, maybe the main menu could have different play modes. Maybe there's an options menu in there to change the volume or whatever. That's the scene we want to load up first. Maybe you have a splash screen. Maybe that's what you want to go up first. But for me, I want the demo scene to be second. So I'm just going to go ahead, drag mine down below it. There we go, my main scene is zero. Now I personally almost always use the indexes, but it is possible to switch scenes by re referencing them by their string name. And we're gonna take a look at that in a bit. But let's go ahead, we'll save this off and let's set it up so that our evil QB is capable of killing us now. So I'm gonna come into my prefabs. I wanna take this evil QB. I'm gonna switch him to be a trigger. And we're gonna have a bit of an explanation on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put him into scene because we're gonna to wanna to look at him in a bit. I'll go ahead and save the scene and let's go ahead and open up the script first. So evil QB, and we'll do it just like we did with the, the projectiles. We're gonna to go to on, tr on trigger enter. And of course that takes a collider as a parameter, which I'm just gonna call coal. Now there's three different types of triggers you can have. There's on trigger enter, there's on trigger exit, and there's on trigger stay. So on trigger enter, as we've seen before, the very first frame where you touch up against the side of uh, the collider. Now the collider is usually green, uh, but it's gonna have the exact same shape as the, the geometry here. I'll go ahead and open this and close it. There we go, get rid of the, the nav mesh agent. We don't need to look at that right now. But anyway, the, any edge, or side of the collider that we collide with, that very first frame that it detects it, that's when we get on trigger enter. Likewise with on trigger exit, if we go ahead and let's start moving through. Let's say our player's running and this cube's coming at us. The second we enter it, that's where we get the on trigger enter. While we're actually inside of it, we get the on trigger stay. And then that first frame it detects that we leave, we get the on trigger exit firing. And this can be useful for a lot of things. The first thing that comes to my mind is maybe you have some sort of empty trigger around uh, a door, like the base of a door. 
And what I mean by empty is like it doesn't have any sort of mesh or any sort of visual to it. And as the player enters it, maybe the door swings open and the lights turn on. Maybe there's some piano music playing or whatever you need. And as they're walking through, uh, maybe you've got some lightning or maybe you want to make the lights actually flicker. But the second they leave that trigger, maybe the door slams down, the lights go out. Maybe you've got a game that's, you know, it's a screamer where something pops out. Whatever it is you want to do, triggers are perfect for that. So I just want to make sure he's got his trigger. I'm going to go ahead, delete him. We'll save it. I'm going to come back into the code and let's finish this off. To start off with, I'm just going to say debug.log. And we're just going to go with the tag. We're just going to go ahead and say what tag it is we collided with. I'm going to save that off again, come back into Unity, and let's try it out. So I'm going to go ahead, hit play, come to the game. We'll run over. Let's see if we can still shoot stuff. All right, so switching it to trigger did not affect that. That looks like it's still working for us. And he's still going around stuff. Let's go ahead and run into him. Ah, there we go. It is now saying player down below. So great. So even though we're using a character controller, we don't have a rigid body on our cubes. We can still go ahead and shoot them. And of course, we still find out that they're showing up the, the player tag when they collide with us. Now, if we take a look here, notice how now they don't push us around. We can run through them. Perfect. Die. There we go. So let's go ahead and look at that scene switching part. So I'm going to go ahead. I don't know why, but I'm saving it off anyway. OCD, I guess. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and I'll leave that line up there. And we're going to take a look to say if the tag of the collider that we're colliding with is equal to, well, we want it in parentheses, player, capital P. Then we want to do something. And that something is switch scenes. Now, in order to switch scenes, we do have to add another namespace up here. But it's pretty easy. It's the Unity Engine dot Scene Manager or Management. We'll add that up top. And then in here, we're just going to say Scene Manager dot Load Scene. And there's two different ones that we're worried about right now. The first two here. We have the ability to load by string name. Remember that name that we had. Or, whoops, missed it. Or we can load by the scene build index. And that's that number we're looked at. And that's the one I normally go by. Really, I think it's just more of a workflow thing. I have a tendency to change the name of my scenes, but I generally never change the order. And I think that's probably why I generally work this way. That's completely up to you on how you want to do it. So let's go ahead. We have. Um, that's set up. Let's go try it out. Start it up and let's go run into something. Sprint over because we're so excited. And let it hit us. Or are we? Maybe sidestep? Oh, don't have to make it easy. <laughs> and of course, when it hits us, uh, we still get the debug message. And it brings us to the scene, but we don't have control of the mouse, it looks like, anymore. So we're going to have to go ahead and turn that back on. And that's the actual FPS controller when it gets to the point where it starts the game. It actually disables that on us. And we can go ahead and turn that back on. I'm going to go ahead and create a new script for it, though. And it's just going to be for this that, that main menu part. So that's actually what I'm going to call it. A lot of times as my games get bigger, I'll actually go ahead and build folder structures, even in the scripts for scripts that are specifically uh, just for that scene. This is a small enough project. I'm not worried about it, but I am going to have to go to that scene. Go ahead. We'll go to main menu, uh, come back into scripts. I'm just going to throw it on the camera for now. We'll go ahead. We'll put it there and let's open it up in the mighty model develop. And I'm going to use the start method. Let's get rid of it all, even though there's a start method there. I just like to type it myself. All right. Now, the two things we want to do is turn the cursor on and also unlock it. So we're going to say cursor dot lock state is equal to cursor lock mode. And I'm just going to say none. 
we'll just go ahead and turn it off. There's three different options. You can find locked and none. I just want to set it to none. And I also want it to show up now too. So cursor dot visible is equal to true. And if we go ahead and save that off, uh, let's go back into our other scene. We'll go ahead, we'll get killed real quick. Make sure you save the scene. We'll start the game back up. And when we get killed, we're brought there. And now we have a cursor that we can actually start using. All right, that's it for this lesson. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.